All right, guys, let's look at how we take these sines and cosines, use our unit circle, and get these guys all on a graph. So before we get started, it may be helpful to find this guy I gave you last week. We filled out the front where we did the radians for all the quadrantal angles, so anything 0, 90, 180, 270, and then the special values down here, how we created the entire unit circle. On the back of that guy, you guys have six little tables here. Uh, it'll be helpful when we do graph these to use them as a starting point because we're going to get some equations to help us with graphing. Okay? So again, if it helped, let's come up with how we get these values. So we're basically just starting with these four points right here. Okay, and we can label them 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. If you remember, anything on a unit circle is a sine, comma, a cosine for x and our y point. Here's how we get all the values we really need. When we do these graphs, we're going to take these five major points, okay, and we're just going to transform them. All right? So if you're at 0, sine is 0, cosine is a 1. Okay, so notice these are backwards. Here's the y, here's the x, just the way we made the table. Um, no real reason to that. At pi over 2, we have a cosine of 0, a sine of 1. Okay, you come over here to pi, you get a cosine of negative 1, sine of 0. You go down to 3 pi over 2, cosine is nothing, sine is negative 1, and back to 2 pi is the exact same thing as 0. So you can see here 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and those numbers just keep repeating. Okay? 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So these guys are basically just shifted. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you some trig graphing paper tomorrow, so you can, we, we have some neat pictures when we do this stuff, okay? But what they're going to look like is this, okay? So you get a sign, we take all those points we just had, and we plot them. Zero, one half, or I'm sorry, zero, zero, okay, pi over two, comma, one, pi, comma, zero, three pi over two, negative one, two pi, zero, okay? So we're just going to take these two, coordinates. Here's our x values. Here's our y values. Here's our x values. Here's our y values for these. Okay, and these are what these two graphs look like. Okay. Now, for a cosine, we go 0, 1. We go pi over 2, 0. We go pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, and 2 pi 1. So a sine is a full wave that starts and ends at the same place. Okay. Cosine's more like this little valley or like this little bowl-shaped thing, okay? Now, if we put these on each other, they're just going to be offset by a, by a little shift, okay? So if we took this cosine and we put it on the sine right there, it would fit, okay? If we started it half a pi off, it would match exactly up, okay? So there's our basic parent functions, okay? So you guys have done parent functions with quadratics, with cubics, with square roots, okay, things like that. All right. While we have these, we should talk about some important properties like domain and range. Okay. So this is actually going to work for both of these guys right now. But our domain, even though we're only going from 0 to 2 pi, okay, these things are sine and cosine waves, so they're going to keep going and going and going. Okay, so our domain is going to be all real numbers. Okay. You can, we can do cosine of 20 pi, and it still have a value. Okay, we can do sine of negative 5 pi over 4, and it still has a value. Okay, our range then, we go from the lowest value up to the highest value, lowest value up to the highest value. Our range is negative 1 to 1. Think about the unit circle. Okay. Unit circle's got a radius of 1. You're never getting outside that radius of 1. Okay, so there's our domain and range. Question at the bottom. How long does it take for one full cycle to go through all the points here? 
Okay, so a full cycle, what I mean by that is I want five points. Okay, we call that a full period. All right, each of these guys take two pi. So the basic pair functions take two pi to go through all five points, both of them. Start at zero, they come down here to two pi. So when I say graph one full cycle, I want five points, and then we can just repeat these things. Okay. So they call this guy amplitude. All right. Uh, so we put an A out here. You guys may remember the A, H, and K transformations that you've done. Okay, we use some similar things. So we determine amplitude by the absolute value of this little guy out here. Okay. Now, what you do is you take your max minus your min and you divide it by 2. So we look at this guy here. Okay. It's starting at 0, ending at 0, so it's going to be a sign. Okay. Uh, amplitude is 1 because there's just a little 1 out front here. This is your amplitude right here. Okay. I know it's tempting to say the height of the entire thing. But in this case, we're just going to say amplitude is 1. Okay, so it's kind of the height of each little individual wave. You don't want to say the, the entire height of the graph. Okay, but that guy has an amplitude of 1. If we made this guy taller and say this guy stretched up here like this and then came down, that guy would have an amplitude of 2 from the base of the wave to the top. Okay. So that guy would now be an amplitude of 2. All right. This B, okay, it's got to be a positive real number. Okay, so we talked about what the, the period of each of these guys is 2 pi. Now, if we start transforming these and changing that B value around, we got to use this thing right here. Okay, period is 2 pi over B. So if you let the b equal a value of 1, your period, 2 pi over 1, is 2 pi, which we said it takes 2 pi to get through all five points with these guys here. Notice a value is a 1 and b value is a 1. a value is a 1, b value is a 1. So these guys have an amplitude of 1, all right, and they have a period of 2 pi. Okay, so I will get you guys graph paper that we're not going to be looking at these numbers down here, okay, but rather graphing in radians. Okay, so it makes them a little bit easier to work with there. Okay. This guy here is a handy way to think about everything we're going to use to transform them. Okay. First step we want to do is determine the period and by solving for b, okay? So you want to take your equation and get it to look like this, okay? So the key is, once we get into some more difficult ones, make sure this guy is factored out, okay? You don't want the b stuck in there, okay? So make sure it's literally separate from these guys right here, okay? You've seen the a before. So if I do a 2x squared with the quadratic, okay, it makes this guy, you know, skinnier, okay, it blows up faster. Well, in this case of sine functions, we talked about it's going to make it taller, okay, it's going to make the amplitude bigger, okay, and that's it for part one, join us for part two.